In the 94th year of the Republic of China, December issue, the cover figure of biographical literature is Xi Tengmin, the sixth vice president of the Republic of China. In this remarkable issue, editor-in-chief Ching Luqian wrote in the editorial office note like this. In this issue, another featured figure, Professor Fan Chuanpa, and Si Tung Min, though they have many differences, share several coincidences. Both have received education in Japan, are connected to Sun Yat-sen University in Guangzhou, and have ties with National Taiwan Normal University. Professor Fan Chuanpa, a mathematician, dedicated his life to education. Besides teaching, he also took the lead in editing mathematics textbooks at all levels. This year marks the centenary of Mr. Fan's birth, and we extend our highest respect to this pioneer of mathematics education in Taiwan. Next, let's step into the story of the pioneer in mathematics education in Taiwan. Professor Fan Chuanpa's story. Dr. Fan Shikuang was invited to give a lecture at National Taiwan Normal University College of Science on March 21, 112th year of the Republic of China. As Professor Fan Chuanpa was the formal director of the Department of Mathematics, his eldest grandson, Dr. Fan, introduced the connection between his grandfather and NTNU during the lecture. Professor Fan devoted his life to education. The life of population in the early years of Taiwan was very tough. He not only worked very hard himself, but encouraged his children to work diligently and honestly, so later they could contribute to their country and society. To support financially challenged students with their studies, he established a special scholarship at the NTNU Mathematics Department, known as the Fan Chuanpa Scholarship. This lecture given to the faculty staff and students helped to understand the historical context of the scholarship's establishment and presented Professor Fan Chuanpa's spirit of hard work and devotion to education. Former students still hold fond memories of Professor Fan Chuanpa and hold him in high esteem. Dr. Fan is the eldest grandson of Professor Fan Chuanpa, the former director of our mathematics department, first to lead the production of textbooks for the nation. Back then, they lived and grew up in the former NTNU faculty housing complex, which is at the Hepping East Road, when our department, mathematics, was located in the Hepping campus. During my student days, I would always hear about this Fan Chuanpa scholarship. Our director said one day, that receiving Fan Chuanpa scholarship isn't easy. Our department of mathematics has three classes, but only the number one student in the entire department can receive it. Even the top student in our class couldn't get it. It's a very honorable achievement. Back at that time, it was 3000 NTD. So why was 3000 NTD so significant? Because our government stipend was just over 2000 NTD. A little over 2000 NTD. I remember 2,200. So, 3,000 NTD was a significant amount of scholarship. It required to be the best student in the entire department to receive such a prestigious and honorable scholarship. Later, because we've been carrying on this tradition, we got in touch with Director Fan Chuanpa's eldest grandson. Using this opportunity, we invite him to come to our alma mater, the College of Science, to give a special lecture. Dr. Fan Shikuang is currently working at the Intel Corporation as a senior engineer and is responsible for the Asia-Pacific region's management and affairs. I am sure his talk will bring us a wonderful afternoon altogether. First, I would like to, on behalf of the College of Science, present our Certificate of Gratitude. Today, I'm very pleased and honored to have this opportunity to come here or it should be said, to homecoming for NTNU to share and exchange some of my past experiences. My family and I lived and grew up in the NTNU's faculty housing complex. Therefore, for us, the NTNU has a significance to our life that is hard to describe. We also take pride in being offsprings of NTNU. I would like to talk about my grandfather. 
Professor Fan Chuanpa's accomplishments and journey. Because among us here aside from a few senior faculty members who lived through my grandfather's era, perhaps, to some young students, it's just a part of history of the College of Science. In fact, during that turbulent times, there are some memorable stories worth reflecting on. Before talking about my grandfather's journey, let me share with you what the former president of Peking University, Mr. Tsai Yuanpei's idea for education. At the university, those who study literature, history, philosophy or applied science, must all start with basic science. Therefore, the academic organization of Peking University has followed his direction since then. Thanks to the president Tsai Yuanpei. At that time, each of Peking University's departments underwent significant reforms. Basing on this concept, he made the Department of Mathematics into what's known as the first category's first discipline. To highlight the idea that mathematics is the mother of all sciences. Why are we talking about Peking University? Because my grandfather, Professor Fan, graduated from Peking University. When he was young, he traveled from his hometown in Liaoning Province, northeastern China, to Beijing to take the exam. Back then, he passed the entrance exam for the mathematics department of Peking University, the number one university in China. This marked the beginning of his academic career, and a period of growth in Beijing. During his studies at Peking University, the renowned poet of the early Republican era, Su Jima, was appointed as professor. Su Jima, with his experience of studying in the United States and England, brought a spirit of freedom to the university and fostered a broader and more international academic perspective. Professor Fan was fortunate to experience that era of the country's vigorous development. This also inspired him to study abroad after his graduation. After graduating from the mathematics department, he stayed at Peking University for two more years as a faculty member. After those two years, he decided to apply for the program at the Department of Mathematics of Tohoku Imperial University in Sendai, Japan, for his further studies. Back then, Tohoku Imperial University was the number one in science among the seven imperial universities in Japan. Professor Fan's time at Tohoku Imperial University gave him the opportunity to observe the research attitudes of world-class scholars. This experience expanded his horizons and broadened his mind and were crucial for his later work towards the development of mathematics education. After the outbreak of the First and Second Sino-Japanese Wars, Chinese students studying in Japan faced a dilemma of whether to return or stay. The Chinese students, presenting exceptional talents like Professor Fan, and coming from the northeastern China, the so-called Kanto region, were encouraged by the Japanese government to stay to contribute to Japan's future development. However, Professor Fan made a brave choice at that time. He temporarily set aside his studies in Japan and returned to his homeland to serve for his country. After returning to China, he joined the Central Surveying School as a senior instructor. The school was established in 1904 during the Guangxu Emperor's reign and was originally founded as the Beijing Army Surveying and Mapping School. It had three classes trigonometry, topography, and cartography, all within a four-year program. Professor Fan was responsible for training students, transitioning from their civilian to military work. As the war was progressing, Professor Fan decided to head south, to the city of Guangzhou, to join Sun Yat-sen University, where he served as the head for the mathematics department. The university was founded in 1924 by Dr. Sun Yat-sen. Therefore, its foundation had a very distinctive background with three characteristics, revolutionary, scientific, and innovative. During his teaching there, Professor Fan passionately and actively served for his country. Despite the tumultuous era of war, he nurtured numerous of the country's outstanding talents in the fields of science and engineering. As the war against Japan's invasion continued, Professor Fan transferred again to Giang Normal College, which is now Guizhou Normal University. There, 
he became the first dean for academic affairs. Due to his passion and devotion for education, he also served as the head of the education department. At that time, Giang Normal College focused on mathematics education as its key academic mission, including mathematics education for primary and secondary schools, as well as cross-cultural mathematics education. At the age of 36, Professor Fan had already assumed such a leading position in academia. This experience became a crucial foundation for his later educational and administrative efforts in Taiwan and buried seeds for his later vision for educating teachers. Guizhou was perceived as the so-called the Great Rear, the area under KMT rule during the War of Resistance against Japan. So he recommended many scholars and students to work there. The region of Guizhou was relatively underdeveloped at that time. So it was a rare opportunity to receive higher education for the people there. Few years ago, my family visited Guizhou a normal university. Today, it is a truly prominent academic institution. It was developed on the foundation laid during the wartime era by the individuals such as scholars and students who dedicated themselves to the educational development of the region. They are the ones who did the groundwork. There are still many records and documents about Professor Fan in their university archives, such as his recommendations for scientific subjects in a university. By the end of the Sino-Japanese War, my grandmother and some family members were still remaining in northeastern China. Eventually, Professor Fan left Giang and returned to the northeast region to reunite with his family. Motivated by his mission for his hometown's educational development, Professor Fan joined the Northeastern University in China as the head for the mathematics department. Back then, in 1931, the Mukden incident happened amid the fires of the Sino-Japanese War. Despite that, he maintained working at the university, contributing to the university, which has achieved such outstanding academic status today. It would be easier to look at the map. He traveled from Beijing to Japan, then back from Japan to Chinese Guangzhou, then to Giang, Guizhou, and then, back to Shenyang in northeastern China. And he finally arrived in Taiwan. At the end of the Sino-Japanese War in 1945, the nationalist government of the Republic of China decided to move to Taiwan, and to take over the relevant institutions. At that time, Professor Fan was instructed to come to Taiwan to take care of the two educational institutions on the island. One was Taihoku Imperial University, known as today's National Taiwan University, and the other was Taiwan Taipei High University, which is now our National Taiwan Normal University. In the 1930s and 1940s, only the extremely few had the chance to receive higher education. Therefore, the scholars who taught at universities were the most prominent and respected intellects. In the beginning, Taiwan only had two universities with mathematics departments, NTU and NTNU. With his knowledge and enthusiasm for mathematics research, as well as abundant experience in education, Professor Fan also later engaged in teaching at other academic institutions, such as National Chao Tung University and Fujian Catholic University. He became the pioneer in the field of mathematics education in Taiwan. At that time, Mr. Fan was also a professor in the Department of Geology and Oceanography at National Taiwan University, and served as the principal secretary for the Institute of Oceanography. Among the research projects he participated in, there was one where he led an expedition aboard the naval vessel Zhongyi. They headed to the Nansha Islands, at South China Sea, including the well-known Taiping Island, to do land surveying and hydrological recordings. The Zhongyi vessel had to return to Taiwan in due time. At that turbulent political situation, Professor Fan took only one assistant with him remained on the island to continue their work and investigations. That was a very adventurous act, considering the difficult circumstance. Driven by his sense of duty towards the nation and passion for work and education, he didn't hesitate to stay until the next vessel came to pick them up. This research expedition and its details are well documented in both China and Taiwan by relevant authorities. So, we have been clearly confirmed that the Nansha Islands and Taiping Island belong to the Republic of China. 
It is just due to these pioneers working bravely during that turbulent times. Around 1945 to 46, Professor Fan came to Taiwan to supervise two universities' transition, and that's when he joined our National Taiwan Normal University. He was the formal director for the mathematics department, first to lead the production of textbooks for the nation. In that era of restoration and development, Professor Fan and other enthusiastic and aspiring scholars worked for many universities in Taiwan, such as National Chao Tung University and National Tsinghua University, or some historically significant institutions like Fu Jen Catholic University, in order to cultivate as many future talents as possible. Professor Fan received a number of national honors and awards, and was officially received by provincial chairman and the president of that time, who recognized his achievements. These accomplishments and honors were closely tied with National Taiwan Normal University's College of Science and the Department of Mathematics. This is a photograph of my grandfather who was holding my sister, Professor Fan Pachin of National Yangming Chao Tung University. They are surrounded by the faculty members of the mathematics department of that time. The photo was taken in front of the earliest NTNU faculty housing. Perhaps some of the senior faculty members present today may still remember who those teachers are in the photo. Actually, I had seen them when I was a child. This photo is a very precious one, but it seems like I wasn't even born then. <laughs> this is Professor Fan and my grandmother, a photo of our family including my father, my mother, my grandparents, my sister, and me. You can compare with this picture. Another very meaningful memory for me is that when I was a child, during my elementary school years, when I was flipping through my textbooks, I always saw Fan Chuanpa as the editor-in-chief. I thought, wow, that's the same name as my grandfather. Then in junior high, it was the same, and in high school, too. Professor Fan was commissioned by the National Compilation and Translation Bureau to compile textbooks and mathematical curriculum for various school levels. These served as the designated model for mathematics education, from elementary school to university. What Dr. Fan said, from elementary, junior high, high-end vocational school, to university textbooks. It was all Professor Fan's leadership. He led the rest of the Taiwan domestic mathematics community, set a model for the still young mathematical academic environment at the time. That said, the mathematics textbooks he compiled laid the foundation for mathematics education in Taiwan. In the photo presented now, we can see that many teachers and senior faculty members have participated in the creation of these Taiwanese series of textbooks for mathematics education. Professor Fan also assisted his Peking University classmate, Li Ingzhao, and his wife Bao de Ming, with the founding of Ming Chuan University. Originally, it was called Ming Chuan Women's Business Vocational School, and was the earliest female business higher education institute in our country. Today's Ming Chuan has been developed into a comprehensive university for both male and female students that has cultivated many business talents for Taiwan. Professor Li Ingzhao, the chairperson, was my grandfather's classmate at Peking University. Professor Li Ingzhao and his wife, President Bao Deming, wanted to establish a business college, primarily for women. They contacted Professor Fan, in hope for working together to establish this distinguished and ambitious college. So, after retiring from NTNU, Professor Fan went to Ming Chuan University, where he became the first dean for academic affairs. This is a photo of Professor Fan's birthday. That day, President Bao Deming threw a birthday party for him. Professor Fan dedicated his whole life to education. He has been doing that for over 40 years. He had cultivated numerous mathematical talents in Taiwan. He laid the foundation for mathematics education in Taiwan and facilitated the development of this field for the following decades. Without a doubt, it can be said that his influence has been far-reaching. Professor Fan had always cared for me. After I graduated, I came back to work as a teaching assistant for him. In the second year, Professor Fan became the chairman for the department. 
and he designated me as the chief for general affairs, Professor Fan Ever said. Master leads to the door. Self-cultivation comes from within. Professor Fan used to say, Yes, he often mentioned this to us students. That is, we students should take the initiative to cultivate ourselves, to strive to create our own future. That is to encourage us, to make an effort to cultivate and improve ourselves endlessly. So he has repeatedly emphasized this at all times. He is also Professor Fan a student. He also has heard about this. The master leads the way, but the self-cultivation lies within us. What Professor Fen gave us was not only knowledge, but also various attitudes towards life. We have learned so much from Professor Fan. We really appreciate Professor Fan's guidance. Professor Fan was really good at tapping people's potential and putting them at the right positions. During his tenure, he nurtured many youngsters and helped them to develop themselves. These two students of Professor Fan are now senior professors. One of them was Professor Fan's finance officer. He later became the director of general affairs for the university and the principal of NTNU affiliated senior high school, by which he has also contributed to Taiwan's education a great deal. Professor Fan's students from back then remember their beginnings. They have been carrying forward Professor Fan's spirit, setting an admirable model of apprenticeship. At that time, when we were his teaching assistants, he trusted us very much. He let us to work on our own. We just need to report to him at the right time. He was truly kind to us. He had taken care of us so well. We want to express our heartfelt gratitude. There are many, many excellent talents in our NTNU Department of Mathematics. I think it is also due to Professor Fan's significant contributions. Once again, we would like to thank Professor Fan's contributions. Professor Fan even established scholarships to encourage junior students. Thanks to him so much. So much. Recipient of the Fan Chuampa Scholarship of the 85th year of the Republic of China, Chen Qian wrote, At that time, my family's financial situation was not good. Receiving the Fan Chuampa Scholarship had greatly helped me and inspired me. I admire Professor Fan's dedication and contributions to mathematics education. In that tumultuous times, he continuously pursued further education, sacrificed personal joys, selflessly imparted knowledge, and laid the foundation for mathematics education in Taiwan. He even gave away his own retirement pension into acts of great kindness, supporting junior colleagues. This elder, whom I had never met, has warmed my heart for many years. Today, as a high school teacher, I should uphold Professor Chuampa's ideal, remain steadfast in my position, dedicate my efforts to guiding students to enjoy mathematics in order to establish a strong foundation for the next generation. It can be said that Professor Fan's entire life was tirelessly and wholeheartedly dedicated to education. We look forward to Professor Fan's legacy being continued and propagated by his descendants and students. <laughs>